Hi everyone, it's Leslie coming to you live. It's four o'clock on a Wednesday, so it's time for another episode of Love Where You Live, Give Where You Love. And um, today we are going to be talking about spring home maintenance tips. So if you have any that you like to any, um, home maintenance things that you do in the spring. Love to see those pop up right now as comments um, and we'll see if they're actually on the checklist that I uh, put together or that we put together on the blog. Um, you will find in the description um, for this video a link to the blog post that has full details on all of the um, items that we're going to go over today. Hi Alexis, hi Phil, thanks for joining us. Um, as always, I uh, would love it if you ask questions, if you make comments, you know, let us know what you're thinking. Uh, of course, hearts and likes are always very well received because I love to receive the love and the likes from you. So um, keep those coming for sure. Um, and again, uh, home maintenance tips, if you've got any, start writing those in the comments right now before I get into those. I just want to always, um, as I always talk about in uh, on these videos, is our motto of love where you live, give where you love. And um, last night I was very honored and excited to bring, I'll show this to you. Ooh la la. Kind of too close. Um, the See if I can put it in the frame. Okay. Um, the check that I delivered to Castile or was able to present to Castile PTA for $500 for um, helping the Hill family purchase a home. So again, I can make one of these handy dandy checks for your school too. Um, it is something that means a whole lot to us. So uh, it, like I said, it was an honor and a thrill to be able to deliver that to the PTA at their general association meeting last night. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us. And um, so, again, love where you live, give where you love. We will donate $500 to the school PTA or program of your choice um, for any property we help you sell or buy. So, um, you know, always keep that in mind with us. Hi, Colleen. Thanks for joining. Um, another thing that uh, we're going to get to at the end of this episode of Love Where You Live, Give Where You Love is an opportunity for you to be able to give back to the community as well. And it's free and it's easy and I can certainly help with it. So I will get to that um, at the end of our video. But without any further ado, I will start getting into the spring home maintenance checklist. Like I said before, there is a link to everything that I'm going to discuss today in the description section um, of this post. So just click on that link and that will give you all of the detailed information as to what I'm going to go over today. So um, without further ado, let's go through some of those things. Uh, it is the second day of spring after all. Uh, we are having interesting kind of weather here in Southern California. I know in the... Uh, in the east, they are having a nor'easter, um, which is causing a ton of snow and lots of flights canceled. Um, but in sunny Southern California, we're lucky. We don't exactly have a ton of sun. We have some overcast skies, um, and we supposedly have rain coming, but I guess that's all up uh, more in like the Santa Barbara and northern Los Angeles County area right now. So in South Orange County, we're just loving life right now. Thanks, Jenny, for joining. Um, so, but needless to say, coming off of winter, sometimes uh, that can create havoc or uh, create some wear and tear on your home. So spring home maintenance tips are, and a checklist is always an important thing to go through. Hi, Kim. Thanks for joining. So the first one that we recommend is to change your HVAC air filter. Sounds really simple, but it is something that people avoid or just forget to do all the time. It's recommended that you do it at least twice a year. Um, your HVAC unit will actually perform better if you were to change it quarterly. So my recommendation is to pick a number day of the year and um, every three months, let's say it's Let's say it's today, the 21st. So every uh, every three months on the 21st, you change your air filter. And um, you'll notice that that will actually help clean out 
um, because it does filter the air and it helps work with the return on your system as well, um, it will help clean out some of the, uh, I don't want to say toxins, but any, you know, some of the dust that can, and potentially allergens. And these days there are so many different types of air filters that you can get and you can even add scents to them, which I've always loved doing if you have, you know, guests coming over and you want your home throughout to smell lovely or, you know, like a baked cake or something like that. They have all those wonderful fragrances. So again, you want to make sure that you change that air filter at least twice a year, if not four times a year. Hi, Tony. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for joining us. The next uh, item on the spring home maintenance checklist is replacing batteries and smoke detectors and carbon monoxide monitors. Um, Many of us have these monitors and we don't realize even when the batteries went in. Is it hardwired? Who really knows, right? Um, so if nothing else, it's really important to just check and even you can press the test button on your smoke alarm because obviously you want to make sure it's working um, in case, you know, uh, a fire or too much smoke or carbon monoxide are in your home. Um, and these days on a lot of the smoke detectors, they actually have an area where you can write the last time that you put the batteries um, when you replace the batteries. If it doesn't, I would recommend taking a Sharpie and just indicating where, uh, excuse me, when you last replaced the batteries so you can have a good idea of how up to date your um, your batteries are. Um, I know that I like to, um, I've recently purchased my smoke detectors and carbon monoxide monitors from Costco, and many of them have what they consider 10-year lithium batteries. So they should have a pretty long lifespan, but again, it's always good to just test them. And usually, you know, it's always kind of fun to freak out the family or the kids with a, with a quick little beep of the smoke alarm. Obviously, I recommend doing that during the day though and not at night so that your uh, family or your neighbors aren't potentially, um, aren't potentially uh, unnerved by it. So, after you've checked your smoke detectors and carbon monoxide monitors, the next thing that you want to do is if your home, which is funny, most homes across America have gutters. Not all in California though, because oftentimes we don't have a ton of rain. But if you do have gutters, you want to make sure to check and clean your gutters in the spring. Um, oftentimes there's going to be a lot of debris that can, uh, that has fallen in the gutters, whether it's leaves, um, slight little branches from trees, uh, especially from the fall and the winter. And so the spring is a great opportunity to clean those out and also to make sure that the, um, the why do I always forget what I'm saying? The gutters are, um, are not loose or leaky because then that can create a, a farther, a, a, a more, a, create a worse problem down the road. So if you can nip it in the bud and take care of it um, at, a, at a maintenance level, then you won't have to worry with big problems and having to replace all of your gutters and, and everything like that. So hi Yvonne, thanks for joining. Again, with any of these home maintenance tips, um, a really great reason to do them is as a preventative uh, of especially the big catastrophes uh, or the big things that could happen to your home. You want to you know, avoid those thousands of dollars um, expenses if you can, right? So these tips will help you avoid those. So, and um, Yvonne, yes, you mentioned that you need to get your gutters cleaned. Um, I definitely have uh, vendors for a lot of these tips that I'm giving you as well. So definitely uh, feel free to direct message us, call us, text us um, for vendor referrals for things like cleaning the gutters and some of the other items. Uh, we also just have um, some great handy uh, man resources or handyman vendors that can do a lot of these things as well or if you're lucky and you maybe have a really resourceful um, and handy dad maybe uh, he can fix it for you too who knows or maybe your you or your spouse is uh, is handy around the house and can do these things too so after you've checked the gutters then um, another important thing to do is to examine your roof I don't recommend stepping on your roof because um, you could potentially break some of the tiles and that could uh, 
that could cause worse damage to your roof, which you don't want to do. You just kind of want to check and see if any of the tiles have moved at all, um, or you know if anything is stuck, or if anything could potentially be damaging your roof. And again, you know it's the type of thing where you could have a, a handyman come out and check that out. You could have a roofer certainly come and check it out as well. Um, just again to make sure that all the tiles are in place so that you can avoid those leaks that um, unfortunately can be an inevitable if you don't continuously uh, check and just examine and monitor your roof. So once you've done that, then the next item is now, and this was something as I was doing some research, this was kind of new to me as well, and it has to do with your dryer. Um, hi Mike, thanks for joining. It is actually to clean your dryer vent. Um, we all pull out the the lint catch and you know take that off and put that back in but it also is very important to actually try to vacuum in that cavity um, in your dryer and then to actually even the the actual vent to um, to vacuum that out as well because if you don't and it gets clogged then it can actually cause a fire so you want to make sure that, that stays nice and clean. Hi, Alec. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining. Um, so again, cleaning your dryer vent is very important. In addition to your dryer, you also want to make sure that you look at the washing machine fill hose um, and just kind of examine it. Again, these are all things that um, it's merely just examining and most likely you don't have to do anything. But um, on the rare chance that you do have to do something, at least you can catch it before it becomes a huge issue. Um, so with your fill hose, what you want to check for are cracks because those cracks can potentially lead to leaks. And you certainly don't want that. That always then requires, you know, uh, a, a maintenance person of some type to come out and fix it, which usually costs a lot more money. So if you can check now and see if the hose is cracked um, and maybe perhaps needs to be replaced, then that's something that you want to do now during this, the, the uh, excuse me, the spring. Hi, everyone. Hi, Liz. Thanks for joining us. And then, so now that you have done everything in your laundry room with your washer and your dryer, you also want to clean and repair your window and door screens. Um, as we're getting into the spring and of course summer, we want to be able to open our windows and our doors and let the nice fresh air in. Sorry, as I look around in the backyard. Um, and so it's important, this is a great time and opportunity to clean those screens and repair the, um, repair any holes or damages in the screen. I know that they have those patch kits that I recall seeing, um, they were ingenious, kids I believe that were on Shark Tank several years ago that created those just those little patches that you apply to your screen and it's able to fix uh, screens if you have any holes so that's something that you can do um, of course it's always nice too going into spring and summer to have sparkling clean windows and uh, French doors sliding glass doors and if you ever need a contact or a vendor for that. We definitely have um, a great team of window washers that can help you. So um, definitely contact us um, if you need that. And so you've now um, cleaned and repaired your windows and door screens. Of course, then you want to also, what's always nice and exciting, is to clean decks, driveways, fences, and other surfaces. Um, I can speak for my family uh, that my husband absolutely loves this one. He loves hosing down the driveway and just making it all nice and clean, cleaning all the dust and the debris. Um, again, sometimes that's a little challenging with spring because we are supposedly having more showers um, this in the next couple of days. But which is nice because sometimes those clean away all the dust and debris. But again. Um, as part of your spring home maintenance checklist. Uh, cleaning all those things off is just always uh, exciting and, and can make it more exciting for summer coming and the opportunity to spend more time outside in your yard um, and enjoying the fresh air. Then um, the next item on our checklist is to repair any cracked or peeling paint. And 
this can be really easy. This, uh, you know, first of all, there's one, there's a few things that I've learned from a very smart painter in my life um, that you should always label a can of paint and you, most people might store it in their garage, but label exactly what room that it was, um, that it, the paint goes to. And, um, and then of course put a date too. So you just kind of know how old the paint is because paint can get old. And what you want to do is you can simply go walking around and look for touch-ups. Um, and if you see any cracked or peeling paint, um, you know, you can just touch that right up. What this will do is just obviously it'll make your house look nicer and fresher and cleaner and springer, springier and happier, but it will also um, increase the lifetime and the lifespan of your paint. So, you know, you can stretch that big purchase or that big spend of having the entire exterior of your home painted or the entire interior of your uh, paint, home painted to tenor. 10 or 12 or 15 years rather than, oh man, I haven't done a single thing to my house and now after eight years it looks bleh. So, <laughs> or it doesn't look good, sorry, that bleh sound um, isn't always a great thing or a great face to make. But, so that is something that you definitely want to do. Um, again, to just make the house ready for uh, what spring and summer has to offer and to make you love your house. Um, again, all of these things obviously are for the care of your home, but when you care for your home, then you just love it that much more. And of course, that's what we want you to do. We want you to love where you live. Um, another item on the spring checklist, um, the spring home maintenance checklist, is to actually vacuum your refrigerator coils. And I will be honest, I didn't always know that I even have <laughs> refrigerator coils on my fridge because who really thinks about that but why it is important and can be helpful to you to vacuum these coils is um, that if they have a lot of dust built up on them it can actually uh, cause the fridge to have to work harder which then obviously means it's going to take more electricity and that of course is going to uh, result in a higher bill um, also, that could potentially decrease the lifespan of your refrigerator if you don't vacuum these coils. Again, this is something where if you have a built-in fridge, this is probably something you can't do. But if you have a fridge that will move, you simply pull it out and you can vacuum the coils that are on the back and the bottom. Um, again, just to increase the lifetime of your fridge and increase the efficiency uh, of how it works. Um, just a couple more home maintenance tips. I know there are a lot. And again, you can go to the blog so you can see there's actually a little checkbox. You can print it off and check off the boxes of the things that you do. Or like I said before, hire a handyman and let the handyman do it for you. Um, but what you also want to make sure to do is check the seals around the windows and doors, oftentimes caulk and um, sealants because of the cold weather can get hard and they'll crack. So you wanna make sure um, that you reseal those. Oftentimes you wanna actually scrape it off and then reseal it again. Uh, not only will this increase the efficiency of the windows and the doors, but it also looks a lot nicer too than the cracks in, um, in the sealants and the caulks. And last but not least, now this one, I don't know if you're going to want to do it, but again, just keep in mind that it is going to um, help you in the long run and create the, uh, increase the lifespan of this particular, let's say, appliance um, in your house. It's your water heater. It is recommended that you actually drain your water heater once a year because sediment builds up at the bottom and or sediment builds up in the water heater and so if you're able to drain it then you can get that sediment out and um, and then the water heater will work more efficiently um, what i recommend um, everyone has the the spot at the bottom the spigot at the bottom of their water heater um, that you can let the water flow out i highly recommend either using buckets um, to collect the water and then watering plants and lawn, um, or if you can even perhaps attach a hose and then use that for a day's watering of your yard, um, that way you're making best use of the water and you're not wasting it. So those are the spring home maintenance 
uh, tips that I have for you today. Um, I, I hope that these seem like some realistic ideas and things that you can do. Like I said, I have a long list of vendors that I can have uh, that I can get in contact with you or that I can give you the contact information for that can easily take care of these items for you so um, you know don't feel overwhelmed by them and you know again it doesn't have to all be done in a day maybe it's something that this entire checklist is something you do throughout spring um, it's all again just to make you uh, love and appreciate your home and make sure that it is in great shape going into the the summer months um, so that you can just enjoy beautiful sunshine and the wonderful weather. Of course, another item, but that isn't, isn't on the checklist, always want to remind you that we are offering the free termite inspection um, for anyone that is interested. I know it doesn't sound very exciting um, to have your home <laughs> checked for termites or dry rot or wood rot um, but again it is a huge maintenance um, or easy way to maintain your home and if you do it in little pieces then oftentimes it won't seem as huge as when you get the $1,200 bill or your house has to be tented um, in many cases in most cases um, if you do have termites they can be spot treated but if you wait too long you might have to have your home tented and nobody wants to do that. So um, again, contact us and we can uh, put you in contact with a free termite inspection. As always, remember our phone number is 44, excuse me, 949-444-1601. And of course, you can always send us an email at info at the swan team oc.com. And you can always uh, look for more information about us on our website, you simply go to www.theswanteamoc.com. And um, last but not least, I had mentioned in the beginning a uh, an interesting idea that I have for giving back to the community. As I always say, love where you live, give where you love, and I love to certainly give back to the schools. Um, but I don't know if you have been going to um, your grocery store, whether it's Albertsons, Vaughn's, Pavilions, or Safeway, and you have noticed that, um, or you've noticed you have been playing the Monopoly game. If anybody knows me, they know that I'm pretty competitive and I like games, and um, so do my kids. So of course we took one of those Monopoly boards because why wouldn't we be one of the people that could possibly win a million dollars or a car or even a $20 gift card? Sure, why not? Um, it's free and it's fun. Um, so you get one of these little tickets and you'll notice that these are the little pieces that go on the board that you play with. Okay, that's great. Then over on this side, they have coupons and some of them are for 50 cents off pretzels or whatever. Some of them are actually for um, their instant winners and their free items. And um, so what I have decided to do with all of my instant winner tickets, like for example, this one here is just for a packet of Signature Kitchen's gravy mix. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redeem this and I am going to donate this to my local food pantry. Um, I think that, you know, some of these items aren't necessarily items that I might use, but that doesn't mean that, you know, this is essentially free stuff that can be given to people that would love to have this stuff. Um, so, uh, what I am offering to you is if you have any of these free tickets and you'd like me to redeem them for you and donate them to um, our local food pantry or homeless shelter, um, definitely get in contact with me because I'd be more than happy to take these and redeem them and again, do some good with them because they would do a lot better in someone's hands than in the bottom of your recycle bin or your trash. Um, and you know, it's, it's times like these when I look at, oh, you know, I can buy myself gravy mix. It's not a big deal, but there are some people that can't and that you know, this would be a big deal to them. So again, um, I encourage you if you want to on your own to definitely redeem these and um, again, donate them to your local uh, food pantry or homeless shelter. Hi Liz, thanks for joining. Um, or again, feel free to send them to me. You can either uh, contact me and mail them to me 
or um, I can pick them up from you, provided you're in Southern California. And uh, I, again, would be more than happy to redeem these and do some good with them. So um, thanks, Alexis. I'm glad you think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, so again, uh, just a, another way to uh, give where you love and take care of each other and just spread some love and some goodness. And, you know, again, this is a fun, silly game that I enjoy playing with my kids. They always think it's fun to open these up and see what pieces they get. Um, and I will admit sometimes the one that's for the free donut every now and again, apprentice Lauren gets one of those, but um, you know, again, the aluminum foil, the tomato sauce. Those are all things that would be a great donation item. So uh, if you have any other ideas as well about giving back, we'd love to hear them. Definitely uh, feel free to contact us. Again, our website is theswanteamoc.com. Our phone number is 949-444-1601. And you can always email us at uh, info at the swan team oc.com of course always remember to follow us on instagram as well um our handle is mission viejo underscore realtor and have a wonderful day have a wonderful second day of spring um don't forget to give everyone that you love a big squeeze and tell them that you love them and um always remember to love where you live and give where you love and take care have a great day